We want to welcome you guys to L3 Perspective. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Glenn Davis. I'm sitting here with my guy, Cameron Macias. It's your boy, Killer Cam. What is up, L3 Perspective? Coming at you live. Super excited to have uh, my friend, my colleague, my big sis, Stephanie, on here. Uh, she also pointed out that she's also our first female on the show thus far. So I'm loving it. Um, but you know, before we get started, as always, you guys subscribe, like, follow, let us know what you like, let us know what you don't like. That way we're all, we can always get better. Ultimately, the whole point is to bring value to you guys. Um, Glenn, I know you've been waiting, you've been waiting for this one. I've been waiting. This is the moment <laughs> I've been waiting for. This is, this is, this is where we're at now. Um, so Stephanie. You know, as we get started, tell us more about yourself, my friend. Um, that's a tall order. Um, okay, so I am a mom of two. Those. I have two beautiful girls. Um, they are little. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> next week, my my baby will be four. Oh. And then I have a six-year-old also. Yep. And I said to her, I was like, where did my baby go? And she was just like, so sassy, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that in the supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I am... Um, I have two two girls. I homeschool yep. them. I um I am a coach, which is how I met Cam. Mm -hmm. Um, I started in this journey because I am also a widow, and so um trying to uh like heal myself. I have learned that I also want to learn how to help others heal in the same uh, retrospect. So my niche is grief and PTSD uh, coaching. Wow. Yeah, we met. Uh, so like I, I, I told a lot of people, like I got into coaching. It was kind of on a whim. Like, you know, I was doing the recruiting thing. And then I had a coach who I was lucky enough on the previous podcast that I was doing. Like it was, you know, it was a recommendation. Like as you do people like, oh, you should talk to this person. And he was like, you should be a coach. I was like, nah, I'm a recruiter. Yeah. Mm. And so, and like, then I realized I don't want to be recruiting. <laughs> and so I got lucky because um, one of the companies that I was doing marketing stuff with, they were like, hey, we have a partnership with this coaching company and you can get a discount on the training. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, I had to like just sold my house in California, you know, cha ching. And so, <laughs> and I was like, maybe it's time that I invest a little bit of money in myself and so that's how i met steph and um that was her that was your second cohort right when we met oh no you were in the second yeah boot yeah yeah, camp, yeah. Right? i was in the like october 2021 boot camp mm. yeah so i started in april yeah. 2021 yeah. i think um <laughs> But mine was not a boot camp, mm. and like just the um the normal weekly classes. That's how we all started, oh, okay. and then I uh, he offer he started to offer the boot camps, and so um I have only missed a couple of them. <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah, so it's been a fun ride, and um and you learn a lot and. I really love coaching mm. people and teaching people and and um working working everything through and and trying to help people grow. Mm. That's awesome. Well, Stephanie, pleasure to meet yeah. you. Uh welcome to the L3 perspective. Uh excited to have this conversation. So so you say you homeschool your kids. I mean, obviously mom, uh you know, you're you're a coach. Um Wow, that's, and by the way, I like that pillow. Um, I'm going to ask you about that pillow, real <laughs> just pillow. To, just to set it up. The I'm going to ask you knowledge. about that pillow. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but yeah. So so as far as uh, uh homeschooling, so real quick, because I, I homeschool my kids as well, or my Shut wife up. and I we homeschool our kids. Uh, how does that work out for you? 
you know, kind of being a coach, you know, um, you know, from a, from a parent, from a homeschool teacher, et cetera, like, let's talk about that really, really quick. And then, you know, I want to definitely dive into your, your amazing story. Um, okay. So homeschool for me, I have a first grader and a preschooler. Sorry. And so, um, I, I fully believe in your learning should look like play. Mm -hmm. Um, in a lot of it. So um, the main thing that I'm focusing on right at the moment, like structured <laughs> learning is, um, is we're using logic of English for our, um, for like our, you know, the, the reading, writing and uh, um, reading, writing uh, okay. stuff. And then, um, and then I, I work a lot through life examples. Mm. So, you know, like we'll go to, um, we have like a small zoo um, in our city. And so um, we'll go there and we'll talk about animals. We'll, uh, they have a small museum of where they found like ma mastodon, uh, um, bones and stuff like that and so they they have a lot of learning there we we go and do stuff a lot mm -hmm. to learn and like in the real world learning mm. um we cook a lot so there's a lot of yep. science in cooking <laughs> um my my six-year-old can like she cooks on the mm. stove um she can full-on make herself yes. a meal um, teach him yeah. teach him right <laughs> so, <Yes. laughs> <yeah. laughs> Um, and so for math, I use slash learn. Um, I really like that because they truly just think that they are playing, mm. um, like it, like it's like another app, but they're really learning good, uh, like math principles and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And then, um, you know, they have other, uh, apps that help them learn and stuff like that. I have a mindset change um workbook that we that we work through and it gives like a story mm -hmm. and then like several activities to do throughout the week and so like each week we're we're working on something or the beauty of homeschool mm -hmm. is that if we're going faster or slower you can you know take it right. as we go but um yeah so we we are we are very unformal <laughs> um but still having some uh, formal right. side of it with, uh, with, you know, like the language arts and right. math. And That's awesome. Yeah. So like, so when you became a coach, I know, and I know we've kind of talked about this a little bit is how has coaching, you know, improved like the homeschool environment or like the communication with your kids environment? Um, Cause I know it's like helped me in certain facets as far as like, how am I asking questions or even like listening and things like that. So how have how has it would you say magnified like your home life um so my my younger she she is a lot more open and receptive <laughs> to, um, <laughs> to um you know like re-regulating and um like bringing things down i've been working for um uh let's see this is 2022 so like the last two years so i went in a lot of times um for the new years i don't like make new year's resolutions or anything but i try to like take a word or a mm -hmm. phrase into the year to focus on on that word or yeah. phrase and so um because I'm a little bit, <laughs> I needed two or two years. Oh, I needed to say two. <laughs> I needed yes. two years to go through um, um, uh, my my word was or my phrase was um, I want to learn how to be responsive instead of reactive, mm. and I I need. And I'm still not perfect that's, yet. That's like that's actually like a 50 year goal, my dude. <laughs> so if you can do it in two, I think you're you're. Give us the secret sauce. Yeah, for sure. 
I'm still not there yet, but I am going to move on this year. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe add to that. Um, but yeah, so, um, you know, trying to learn how to get myself in a better regulated mm-hmm. spot, which pulls in my <laughs> Oh my gosh. Don't worry, guys. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> um, it, so, you know, like your, your emotions are, are really just information. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so going down the road of being responsive instead of reactive allows you to like, like, um, somebody, I can't remember who I heard it from. It was probably Noble's podcast. Mm. Um, but somebody on there, oh no, it was just a conversation I had okay. with Noble. He was like, you know, most people look at emotions like, oh, I don't want to see that. Yeah. Push it away. And he was like, he was like, you have such an interesting perspective on emotions. You like pick it up and you're like, huh, what? Yeah, yeah. What yeah. can I do can with I stretch it? it? Can I can I <laughs> and, um, it? <laughs> yeah. And um and so really that's how like that is testimony to um how i've spent my last two years trying to learn about what it is that i'm feeling because if you like if you understand the emotion that you're Mm -hmm. feeling it gives you information and then you can decide how you want to respond and then instead of just like either stuffing and avoiding or like Mm -hmm. um or being explosive about it um and so um I got my pillow. <laughs> yes. At, um, because so when I, okay, so further into my story, when I was 31 years old, my oldest was two. Mm. Um, I was three months pregnant with my second and my husband passed away mm. suddenly. And so, um, you know, my younger, she, she doesn't really go through a lot of the grief stages yet because she doesn't even realize that she's missing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Cause she's, wasn't used to it. um right and so we will we will go through yeah. it eventually you know like she'll start to realize that um you know her dad isn't there right. that you know what she is missing yeah. but um but she's not there yeah. yet um but my older uh she she fully understands what she's missing and and she has a tendency to lean towards mm-hmm. anger <clears throat> And so, um, and so it doesn't really matter where we're at, um, you know, it comes out as anger. Mm -hmm. So I bought my emotions wheel because I am also ADHD. And one of the things about being (laughs) neurospicy, as one of my favorite people like to call it, it is. Neuro- Shout out to all the ADHD parents and cha cha neuro people. Um, well, so we have a hard time, like even understanding in ourselves what we are feeling and what the emotion is and everything, breaking it down. And so, um, the, the emotions wheel is a good, a good breakdown of all of your emotions. Most people know the primary ones. Um, so that's sad, mad, scared, joyful, Mm -hmm. uh, thoughtfulness right. and happy right so that's in the inner circle yeah. and then the secondary circle um informs more of those so you know like when you're feeling mad or is it because you feel hurt um are you do you feel hostile yeah. um do you feel critical towards other you know like like why yeah. and then what is informing that criticalness you know like are you skeptical mm-hmm. of their of their intentions, you know, like, like what Mm -hmm. is going on. And so I bought it as a tool to try to help my, my older daughter, you know, like a gentle tool that we could interact with. And when she's mad, you know, like I can sit there and be like, here, baby, scream into the pillow. It's okay. (laughs) Do it. (laughs) Um, Right. But then too, you know, we're able to Mm. try to dissect where are these emotions coming from as I'm trying to learn about emotions also. So as a as a parent, um, and and even as a widow, like there there are people who uh, are in similar situations, like 
that you're in, right? Like, how do you as a parent, as a coach, like navigate and help your kids through those, uh, you know, through those emotions while you yourself, you're actually kind of learning it? Um, how, how, how do you, I guess, kind of counterbalance that? Okay, so I talked about my, um, my uh, word or my phrase for the year. And so, um, excuse me, so for my husband passed away in 2018. And so from 2018 until I said 2020 is when I changed mm -hmm. it. Um, I worked through the, the word grace, like just giving myself mm. grace. Um, I'm not going to do it perfectly. And, and in fact, one of the, I don't remember who said it. Somebody said, you know, like you have to, as parents, we have to slow right, down yeah. um, in, in, our, in our responses because I've never been this parent at this specific mm -hmm. time to you as the child while you've been this specific yeah. age or time or understanding mm -hmm. or anything else, you know, like, we are ever changing and ever adapting. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so my first uh, tip is give yourself some yeah. grace. Like, like there are days, um, you know, in the midst of, in, in the hard, um, like, like in the mm -hmm. mud, um, that if they were fed and everybody went to bed alive, yeah. It was, it, was a good day. Day. it was a good day. Yeah. It was a good day. Ring a ding ding, baby. <laughs> <laughs> we are alive. Right, right. We yeah, are yeah, fed. We, we, and we that's are it. Warm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, so then, you know, like, like, how do you help yourself through your emotions? How do you help your kids through your emotions or their emotions? Um, I think that the big thing to do is to simply um acknowledge mm -hmm. them yeah. you know like like so often it's it's not appropriate to feel sad or scared or what is my other one mm -hmm. bad disgusted you know like those are all in our society right. they they're all emotions that were like they're tab yeah. taboo mm -hmm. you're not supposed to feel those emotions God forbid anybody cry <laughs> in front of somebody else. Like, in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, it's, it's this terrible uh, thought that we have in the world that, you know, um, that we can't, that people aren't allowed to have their emotions. Mm -hmm. And, um, and what ends up happening is that, especially those emotions, mm -hmm. they get like, um, like re-representate, re, -represent, re -represent. represented. Mm, I'm sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they get moved into anger because that's the appropriate emotion to feel. That's an okay mm -hmm. emotion to feel and yeah. have. And so, especially when we are raised and taught in that mindset of saying, well, anger is a perfectly fine emotion yeah. to have, you know, like, so then you can break down and say, okay, well, you know, like, what am I really feeling? Am I, am I really feeling, you know, one of these, um, okay, so bad is over here or angry mm -hmm. is here. Am I really feeling one of these, you know, like on the tertiary uh, ring? Am I really feeling one of these mm -hmm. emotions or am I like, you know, over here in sad and feeling some of these emotions? Yeah. And, um, and so I think that, you know, like just making it okay to feel your emotions and say that they're valid and then move on, you know, like with, okay, so what can we do about that emotion? Yeah. You know, like we don't have to scream and fight because we're angry that our sister did something. You know, you can sit there and use your big girl voice and say, I don't like it when you throw things at me. Please <laughs> yeah. don't do that girl, anymore. I'm gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> the communication. That's how it's so. Yeah. Have you, would you say that you've always been somewhat in tune with like people's emotions and, um, you know, th what you've gone through in the last couple of years has only enhanced that? Or do you think what's happened has really kind of brought you into that realm of really being cognizant of emotions, how, you know, how to, how to navigate them, how to move through them? Um, yeah. Um, I think, uh, um, you know, like empath is a new buzzword, yep. right? Like five years ago, 
<laughs> but so five years ago, nobody mm -hmm. ever labeled themselves as an MCAT, right? Um, and so, you know, like I never really thought of myself like that. I do think that that I'm, I like the psychology yeah. of, you know, like, like, uh, Cam, you've heard me say that I identify as socially awkward <laughs> instead of. Um, she does. She does say that. That's that's a valid fact. Of, <laughs> <laughs> instead of being like an extrovert or an introvert, I I feel like I am socially awkward. I will sit in a corner and um, like in a big gathering and just watch people interact. Mm because that's where I get my piece from and unless I know somebody and then I'll talk your ear off um, sound like? which is where the <laughs> um <laughs> but so you know like so all the way through high school um I had very few mm -hmm. friends and that was perfectly fine yep. with me because I really enjoyed watching how people interacted with mm -hmm. each other and um and you know like how how they could, um, how, you know, like how the world works through the eyes of yeah. people, right? Um, when I majored, um, I majored in uh, science with an emphasis in psychology. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so, um, you know, emotions and the psychology of people has been huge in my life. Everybody, all of my friends, uh, growing up, they all said that I should be a counselor, um, and I said that there was too much school. Agreed. And... Yeah. <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> and yeah, and so, um, but you know, like being a coach, um, mm -hmm. I was asked over the summer how it was going, and I said that for the first time in my life, I finally feel like I'm doing like what I was made to do. Mm. <laughs> And so, I'm um, doing Jesus's work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. loving it. That's right. <laughs> yep, that's awesome. So, I mean, as we 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 gear up to wrap up at some point, um, a lot of interesting points that you know you talk about from you know homeschooling your kids to being a coach to you know the ADHD and tapping into emotions like there. I mean, obviously, that's so much we can mm -hmm. unpack even more. Um, you know, when you come, when you have a, a, a client, right, let's say you have a client who, uh, you know, they're, they're a single parent, right? They have a similar story to, to yours, right? Um, they're homeschooling. Uh, they're, they're, they're going through the, the, the ropes of wanting to discipline their kids, right? And obviously, th that's a whole nother conversation. Like, how do you, if they're coming to you, they saying, hey, like, life just feels so chaotic right now. How can you coach that individual? Uh, maybe it's a listener on the call uh, who is actually going through that in the moment. Like, wh what could you say to that person um, and giving them tips or giving them some advice through your experience, through your lens, and how you view the world? Um, so, as a single parent, it's hard. Oh, yeah. um, mm -hmm. um, I, I hugs, hugs. Um, I, I love you. <laughs> so many hugs. So many hugs. <laughs> it's hard. Give yourself right grace. Now. You know, like, like, um, Cam, me and you talk a lot about what our uh, glass yeah. balls are and, and making sure that, um, uh, so like, like the glass ball analogy is if you're juggling all these things, you have rubber balls and glass mm -hmm. balls. Obviously, if the glass ball drops, it shatters. But if the rubber ball drops, it just bounces mm -hmm. back yeah, up, right? right? And so you like everything that you're that you're juggling. You want to um, you want to classify it as a glass ball or a rubber yeah. ball. And so you know, like you want to specify out what are your glass balls? What needs to be done right. today? Um, and and just give yourself grace. And I think that you know, like. Today, parents, we all feel a sense of incompetency because of what social media has done mm -hmm. to us. And, um, yep. and like, you, you're doing great. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know you. 
I don't know what you're doing, but you kept those babies alive <laughs> yeah. today and you are doing an amazing <laughs> yes. job and keep, keep it up tomorrow. Yeah. Um, as far as like, um, uh, grief, I think that, um, you know, find somebody safe mm-hmm. that you can express your emotions with, um, find a safe space or anything and acknowledge what you're feeling and, and say that it's okay. Right. It's, it's okay to, to feel this way, to, you know, to be struggling in this spot. That is okay. Um, we're not going to fix it in, in an instant. And, um, and that's not really how the world works. If you are new to homeschooling <laughs> and you feel all sorts of pressure uh, out there, um, there's a reason that homeschooling is different than conventional yeah. schooling. And just because conventional students sit for eight hours every day does not mean that your homeschool has to look the same way mm. because you're dealing with one or yeah. two or three maybe five right. children, no. um, <laughs> but no. <laughs> not, not quite that much yet. <laughs> but, you know, like in the homeschool community, I know a lot of parents who have a lot right. of kids. And so, you know, like, like, you know, so I don't, but, you know, the, the teachers at school, they have a classroom of 30 to 35 yeah. mm-hmm. students. And so the, the, uh, ability to teach your one or two students who aren't even working on the same mm-hmm. thing but you know like the ability to teach your one student in the way that they learn is much different than how that teacher in the school setting is going to teach 35 students who quite possibly there's like three or four different ways yeah. that each of your students right. learn and so you know like like that's one of the biggest things that I struggle with in, um, like the misconception mm-hmm. I'd say of in homeschooling versus uh, public schooling because I'm the first person in my family to homeschool. And so, um, you know, like there's a lot of people that you're like, oh, you don't sit there for eight hours every, you know, <laughs> what are they even learning then? And I'm like- You'd be surprised. <laughs> like, they learn quite a lot, thank you. Yeah, yeah. so much. So, um, <laughs> yeah, that's- Yeah. and. And so, yeah, I'm, I couldn't imagine having 35 of Isaiah's and Darren's bro, running bro, around. That's, right. that's why I'd be saying like, like hats Look. off to homeschool and hats <laughs> off to school. Cause at the end of the day, yep. kids are, kids are, are yeah. hard. Like, and I yep. think not enough yeah. people, like everyone wants to, I was talking, I was talking to Ned about this last night. It's like, you know, so many parents get wrapped up and then like, Oh, being a parent is great. And it is great. It's great to have kids, but like, let's not play it out like it's not hard being a parent you feel me that is like a job you may love your job but doesn't mean your job isn't taxing like you don't need to you know and uh, i think kind of like you said there's there's, it's just that there's talks that need to happen that Mm -hmm. aren't happening as much as they should be yeah yeah so and it's okay to struggle through life like that is one of the things that we are you know like like that society, you know, wants you to believe that every Instagram mom who has the perfect shot is, is right. And it's, it is okay to struggle through life. Okay. Oh, yeah. like, it's the, it's the old, uh, you know, it's the, the Oprah got fired. Yeah. The Michael Jordan got cut. Um, mm-hmm. That quote that I sent you this morning was from a LinkedIn live. Um, so he's this guy on YouTube who always posts like selling stuff. Mm-hmm. And he even said on there, he's like, yo, I know everyone sees everything I am now. He's like, but please believe like I made a whole bunch of money and then I lost it all. I had a business partner who stole right. all my money. I had this, I had that, mm-hmm. I had this. He's like, you know, this is seven, you know, eight years in the making. And mm-hmm. there's plenty of things that have happened in between. And I think too many times people just don't remember that there is so much more in between. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and then like one of the things that will carry through to be a life lesson, you know, like as parents, we like sort of tag moments that we can pull back. Right. Mm -hmm. And so as like a really um, stupid analogy, um, but, but I will go back to it several times. I am (laughs) sure. So um, uh, on Monday this week, Charlotte was, um she got really mad at me because 
uh, I criticized her penmanship mm. and uh, like like throw herself on the floor, cover her up with a blanket, like won't even show me her face. Oh, right? wow. And so, um, so I said, I'm like, you know, like as gentle <laughs> as, and calm as I can be, I'm like, baby girl, you know, like everybody had to learn how to write. Yeah. This is okay. Yeah. You know, like, but now that we know that this is where, that there's a struggle in this area, we can like hone in and work on it. Right. Yeah. You know, like, it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong or that you're bad or yeah. anything else, but because I didn't give her the instant praise, yep. um, you know, she, she felt a lot of shame for that. And so then like later in the day, she came in and caught me playing solitaire because solitaire is how I like decompress mm -hmm. myself. And as I'm working through things, I like, and because I get really overwhelmed. Yeah. Um, and so instead of my old ways of dealing with my overwhelmed uh -ness, i start playing solitaire because then it like helps me like mentally process everything that i'm going to do and how, yeah. you know, like what's my order and everything and so um so she came in and she was like oh mom can i learn how to play this and so the the game that i was playing had like all the different types of solitaire mm -hmm, yeah. right and so she learned how to play spider solitaire fantastic so then we move on to like free cell which is the next one and she's like oh mom can i learn how to play that one too and i was like well baby girl you know like this one it says that it's a expert level one i said so it's not a great one to learn mm. on i said you can watch me but you know like i don't even know that i'm going to be able to beat this yeah. right and she was like well why would you play it i said because i enjoy the challenge and so she she sat here and she watched me and so I didn't win the first time. I didn't win the second time. I clicked through and I did finally win the third time. Yeah. And um, and so she was like, but mom, how did you do that? And I was like, well, because even though we struggle once or twice or three or however many times, it doesn't mean that we yeah. give up. You know, like, like I want the points from winning that game. <laughs> I'm going yeah. to continue. Yeah. <laughs> to play the game either until I'm frustrated with it and move back onto the work that I should be doing or until I win it. And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to wholly pull on that one a lot to say, do you remember, you know, like when we play a game, we don't just right away right. give up. If, if we, if we are challenged, we keep learning and trying to do it a different yeah. way. And so, um, you know, I, yeah, I think that, a lot of people don't give themselves that space mm -hmm. or you know the it's okay to do it with a silly card game but it's not okay to do it in real life right, yeah. and but most of our successful people in the world have michael jordan he was cut mm -hmm. and oprah winfrey she was fired um uh steve harvey he was told by like his parents and his teacher that he would never be on TV. He he said as a little kid, I want to be on TV. And like his teach he got in trouble for that. His mom told his dad to like take care of him. Mm. <laughs> um, you know, and and so one of the things that uh his dad taught him, he, he I I just listened to him talk about it recently, which is why I'm able to pull it up. But um you know like his dad said to him hold on to this if this is what you want to mm -hmm. do he was like what do your what does your teacher and your mom want you to write down yeah. and so he told them what they wanted him to write down he goes fine you write that on your piece of paper you hand it in he was like you take this other piece of paper you fold it up and you keep it to yourself you put it in your nightstand every single morning you pull it out and you remind yourself that this is what yeah. you want to yeah. do and and so you know like like we don't have to share our our whole world with everybody because not everybody is ready for that. Mm. But if we want to be successful, we need to like keep that in ourselves and every day come back to it and say, this is what I want to be. This is where I want to mm -hmm. go and, and try to work through that in ourselves. And it's okay that not everybody is there to support. Yeah. It's okay. Yep. All right. Well, Stephanie, uh, appreciate you as we kind of wrap up. Uh, you know, please let people know where they can find you. 
Um, so the best way I think to find me is um, probably my website. Mm-hmm. Uh, my website is pressedcoal.com. Like I press you <laughs> or I press the button, uh, pressedcoal.com. And um, I am on all of the social medias. I am not terribly active though. <laughs> so you can either find me by my name, <laughs> Stephanie Loader, or um, Discovering Grace is is my other handle on like Instagram and stuff mm-hmm. like that. I'm on there, but I'm not very active. And so um, I'm working on a book and hopefully that will be coming out soon. Um, in, in another lifetime, I did a podcast. Uh, <laughs> uh, so maybe one day I'll start my blog and my podcast up again. Uh, but uh, my website, Press Cole, would have all that. I didn't even know about the podcast. And no, you can. <laughs> um, if you want to talk about coaching or you just want to talk in general, um, my link to schedule an appointment with me is on my website also. And I am really good at setting out like goals for the new year mm-hmm. or uh, coming up with phrases or words to take you into the new year and breaking all of that down to give you step by step. And so actionable reach goals. Out if you want yeah. to talk about mm-hmm. it. I love it. I yeah. So any, any parting words, my friend? Yeah. Uh, Steph, thank you very, very much. Um, not only just for your time, but for the information that you provided. Um, as the, the interview went on or the conversation itself went on, I was just like, man, there's a lot of information. Um, a lot of great information that if I'm a listener, if I'm watching it, like I've been able to kind of take something away from it. And so one of the words that stood out, we talk about one words, uh, that stood out uh, in our conversation today was grace, right? And mm. so I, I have, you know, I'm a parent. We homeschool our kids. Um, I think our, our whole household have ADHD. So <laughs> the one thing I was reminded today was to have grace. And so I want to thank you yeah. uh, for the conversation today. Thank you for explaining the pillow yep. that had me locked in the yep. entire interview. Yep. Um, but uh, again, just thank okay. you, uh, Cam. I appreciate you guys connected. You connecting us. Yeah, man. All right, Steph, we appreciate you. Yeah, thank you. We'll see you later. And L3 Perspective is out.